Ellen White, Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4, page 221. It is the lot of God's servants to suffer opposition and reproach from their contemporaries. Now, as in the time of our Savior, men build the sepulchres and sound the praises of the dead prophets, while they persecute the living messengers of the Most High. The Great Controversy, Introduction, pages 7 through 10. In His Word, God has committed to men the knowledge necessary for salvation. The Holy Scriptures are to be accepted as an authoritative, infallible revelation of His will. They are the standard of character, the revealer of doctrines, and the test of experience. Quote, Every Scripture inspired of God is also profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, which is in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, furnished completely unto every good work." End quote. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17, Revised Version. Yet the fact that God has revealed His will to men through His Word has not rendered needless the continued presence and guiding of the Holy Spirit. On the contrary, the Spirit was promised by our Savior to open the Word to His servants to illuminate and apply its teachings. And since it was the Spirit of God that inspired the Bible, it is impossible that the teaching of the Spirit should ever be contrary to that of the Word. The Spirit was not given, nor can it ever be bestowed, to supersede the Bible. For the Scriptures explicitly state that the Word of God is the standard by which all teaching and experience must be tested. Says the Apostle John, Quote, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. End quote. 1 John 4, verse 1. And Isaiah declares, quote, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. End quote. Isaiah 8, verse 20. Great reproach has been cast upon the work of the Holy Spirit by the errors of a class that claiming its enlightenment profess to have no further need of guidance from the Word of God. They are governed by impressions which they regard as the voice of God in the soul, but the spirit that controls them is not the spirit of God. This following of impressions to the neglect of the scriptures can lead only to confusion, to deception and ruin. It serves only to further the designs of the evil one, since the ministry of the Holy Spirit is of vital importance to the Church of Christ, it is one of the devices of Satan through the errors of extremists and fanatics to cast contempt upon the work of the Spirit and cause the people of God to neglect this source of strength which our Lord Himself has provided. In harmony with the Word of God, His Spirit was to continue its work throughout the period of Gospel dispensation. During the ages while the scriptures of both the Old and the New Testament were being given, the Holy Spirit did not cease to communicate light to individual minds apart from the revelations to be embodied in the sacred canon. The Bible itself relates how, through the Holy Spirit, men received warning, reproof, counsel, and instruction in matters in no way relating to the giving of the scriptures. And mention is made of prophets in different ages of whose utterances nothing is recorded. In like manner, after the close of the canon of the Scripture, the Holy Spirit was still to continue its work to enlighten, warn, and comfort the children of God. Jesus promised His disciples, quote, The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in My name, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you, end quote. Quote, When he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, and he will show you things to come, end quote. John 14, verse 26, and John 16, verse 13. Scripture plainly teaches that these promises, so far from being limited to apostolic days, extend to the Church of Christ in all ages. The Savior assures his followers, quote, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world." End quote. Matthew 28, 20. 
And Paul declares that the gifts and manifestations of the Spirit were set in the church, quote, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. End quote. Ephesians 4, verses 12 and 13. For the believers at Ephesus, the apostle prayed, quote, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, end quote. Ephesians 1, verses 17 through 19. The ministry of the Divine Spirit in enlightening the understanding and opening to the mind the deep things of God's Holy Word was the blessing which Paul thus besought for the Ephesian Church. After the wonderful manifestation of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, Peter exhorted the people to repentance and baptism in the name of Christ for the remission of their sins, and he said, quote, Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. End quote. Acts 2, verses 38 and 39. In immediate connection with the scenes of the great day of God, the Lord by the prophet Joel has promised a special manifestation of his Spirit. Joel 2, 28. This prophecy received a partial fulfillment in the outpouring of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost, but it will reach its full accomplishment in the manifestation of divine grace which will attend the closing work of the Gospel. The great controversy between good and evil will increase in intensity to the very close of time. In all ages the wrath of Satan has been manifested against the Church of Christ, and God has bestowed His grace and Spirit upon His people to strengthen them to stand against the power of the evil one. When the apostles of Christ were to bear His gospel to the world and to record it for all future ages, they were especially endowed with the enlightenment of the Spirit. But as the church approaches her final deliverance, Satan is to work with greater power. He comes down, quote, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time, end quote, Revelation 12, 12. He will work, quote, with all power and signs and lying wonders, end quote, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. For six thousand years, that mastermind that once was highest among the angels of God has been wholly bent to the work of deception and ruin, and all the depths of satanic skill and subtlety acquired all the cruelty developed during these struggles of the ages will be brought to bear against God's people in the final conflict. And in this time of peril, the followers of Christ are to bear to the world the warning of the Lord's second advent, and a people are to be prepared to stand before him at his coming, quote, without spot and blameless, end quote. 2 Peter 3, verse 14. At this time... The special endowment of divine grace and power is not less needful to the church than in apostolic days. Loma Linda Messages, page 33, quote, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper, end quote. Isaiah 8, 20, quote, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them, end quote. Two texts here are set before God's people, two conditions for success. The law spoken by Jehovah himself and the spirit of prophecy are the two sources of wisdom to guide his people in every experience. Deuteronomy 4, 6, quote, This is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, who shall say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people, end quote. The law of God and the spirit of prophecy go hand in hand, to guide and counsel the church, and whenever the church has recognized this by obeying his law, the spirit of prophecy has been sent to guide her in the way of truth. Revelation 12:17. quote, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, 
which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, end quote. This prophecy points out clearly that the remnant church will acknowledge God in his law and will have the prophetic gift. Obedience to the law of God and the spirit of prophecy has always distinguished the true people of God, and the test is usually given on present manifestations. In Jeremiah's day, the people had no question about the message of Moses, Elijah, or Elisha, but they did question and put aside the message sent of God to Jeremiah until its force and power was wasted and there was no remedy but for God to carry them away into captivity. Likewise, in the days of Christ, the people had learned that Jeremiah's message was true, and they persuaded themselves to believe that if they had lived in the days of their fathers, they would have accepted his message, but at the same time, they were rejecting Christ's message of whom all the prophets had written. As the third angel's message arose in the world, which is to reveal the law of God to the church in its fullness and power, the prophetic gift was also immediately restored. This gift has acted a very prominent part in the development and carrying forward of this message. In the light of these statements, we can better understand what Ellen White meant in the following well-known quote, Manuscript Releases, Volume 10, page 311. The very last deception of Satan will be to make of none effect the testimony of the Spirit of God. Quote, Where there is no vision, the people perish. End quote. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Satan will work ingeniously in different ways and through different agencies to unsettle the confidence of God's remnant people in the true testimony. He will bring in spurious visions to mislead and will mingle the false with the true, and so disgust people that they will regard everything that bears the name of visions as a species of fanaticism. But honest souls, by contrasting false and true, will be enabled to distinguish between them.